This Game Wrap is brought to you by the Falls City National Bank. Friendly, courteous, neighborly banking since 1907. By Bucks Convenience Stores, serving all of South Texas and a proud supporter of the Beaver Nation. By the Beaver Shack, a proud supporter of all Falls City athletics. By Score Game Day Bags, you got the hat and t-shirt, now get the Score Game Day Bag. Visit scoregamedaybag.com. By San Antonio Masonry and Steel, located on FM 1560 North and in Converse. And by... Hi everyone, Mr. Bowtie here. Thank you so much for checking out my content and my channel. Now make sure you bang home that red subscribe button on YouTube so that way you can stay up to date on the latest content from around the area that you won't find anywhere else. And follow me on Twitter at Mr. Bowtie1982. Thank you so much and enjoy the show. Third round of the 2A Division II playoffs down in Jordanton features a couple of small schools that are used to success in different sports as Fall City takes on DeHannis. The Beavers have not had much trouble in the playoffs so far, beating LaPrior and Granger. Meanwhile, DeHannis made school history last week while sitting at home. When El Dorado forfeited, that meant DeHannis would qualify for the third round for the first time ever in football, meaning that they have still never won two football playoff games on the field in the same season. DeHannis has already had some athletic success this month as their volleyball team made the 1A semifinals before losing to eventual state champion Netches up in Round Rock. Would Fall City make it three for three in the playoffs all time against DeHannis or would DeHannis pull off the big upset? Hey, let's take you down I-37 to Jordanton and check out all the action. By state law, you cannot have a Fall City game without the Lawrence Welk bubbles. And a one, and a two, and a... Fall City and DeHannis have been district rivals in football off and on over the years, but this is just their third playoff meeting, both won by the Beavers. DeHannis is one of a handful of 1A schools that opt to play 11-man football, so they are 2A in football and 1A in all other sports. Fall City quarterback Jackson Pipes was lost due to injury early in the season, but he has done a lot to help out the team, including current quarterback Luke Schaefer, as shown in this interview brought to you by Bucks Convenience Stores, serving all of South Texas. Watching Luke, being there for my teammates, um, being there for anything they need, just being an overall good teammate for them. I go to uh, scouting report every day, um, and uh, that's basically it, you know, just being there for them and everything. Great positive attitude. Remember, he had to wait last year while current UTSA star Keyshawn Johnson had all that success at quarterback. He will be back in 2021 for his senior season. Brought to you by Bucks Convenience Stores, serving all of South Texas. Winds gusted out of the Northeast as the game kicked off. It turned out not only not to be an inhibitor for the Beavers, it turned out to be a 12th and 13th defensive player. First quarter, the Cowboys did a good job of moving the ball down the field, but the wind played havoc. Pass floated into the wind wind long enough for the defense to break up a potential touchdown. Next play, Ethan Reyes' trick play throw held up again in the wind. This time it was intercepted by Darren Lopez, the first of many INTs by the Beavers. Stop the run game. They're really heavy on the run and our defense did a good job stopping it. Ensuing Falls City Drive, fourth and inches. A chance for a fourth down stop for DeHannis, but Luke Schaefer on the keeper for the first down. Drive ended with a 34-yard touchdown run by Cole Thomas, 7-0 Beavers after one. He ran so fast the Beaver mascot lost his paw trying to keep up. He probably could use a quick stop at the Beaver Shack. Of course, the Beaver Shack is a great supporter of Falls City Athletics. Then the defensive show began playing, brought to you by the Falls City National Bank. Friendly, courteous, neighborly banking since 1907. Cowboys again deep in Beaver territory. Quarterback Jonah Perez pass picked off by Grant Gendrush, he would go most of the way into the wind. That was the first of two interceptions for the junior. Remember, in 2A ball, everybody plays both ways. 80 yards on the return, but wouldn't quite score, though that just set up the Beavers in short territory. That play was the moment Falls City began its complete dominance over the Cowboys, and that play was brought to you by the Falls City National Bank. Friendly, courteous neighborly banking since 1907. First play of the second quarter, Cole Thomas with his second touchdown 
touchdown run. Beaver Hats all lit up, 13-0 the score. Next drive, DeHannis tried a flea flicker, another trick play that fooled Falls City, but not the wind. Ball blown out of reach of the receiver, and the Cowboys punted. Gendrush good on offense and defense. Five-yard touchdown run, 19-0 as the Beavers pulled away, just like the Bubbles. When Gendrush wasn't making plays, it was Wesley Molina. He had not one but two interceptions in the game and both led to touchdowns. The first was Thomas's second touchdown run of the game from 20 yards. Blue light hat section definitely lighting up in joy. Second half, Luke Schaefer played catch with Cody Arasola. Short pass complete, then Arasola broke tackles like a kid breaking plates in a home decor store. 51 yards on the play as Falls City blew past to Hannes. Four different Beavers had an an INT five total in the game, and the trick plays for the Cowboys failed as they reached just 120 yards of total offense. DeHannis will have a great chance at another long playoff run in both baseball and softball, but their football run is over 39-0. Falls City moves on. Going into the game, coach told us to be mindful of the wind and which way it was going. On defense, is blowing against you. Obviously, the receivers can't go as deep. They can't throw the ball as far, so you have the advantage of knowing that they're going to go quick game, short routes like that. And uh, if it's going past you, then uh, just uh, backpedal a lot faster, a lot deeper. Told us that they would be running a lot of gadgets, stuff we hadn't seen before. And uh, I thought our defense did a great job because uh, Rungi and uh, teams that we faced recently have been doing gadgets on us because they've seen that some in the beginning of the season were to work, but uh, we took care of that tonight. We uh, used the win to our advantage by coming out second half and uh, giving them the wins because we knew if we shut them down in the third, they wouldn't be able to come back in the fourth. And by doing that, we uh, the overthrows helped our secondary adjust because we usually have a little weak in the secondary, but that helped us adjust a lot. We were able to adjust better to their run offense because they're usually a run power team. So they knew we were weak in the pass, and we just adjusted as best we can, stop the run. They had to go deep and do trick plays and gadgets, and after we stopped them, they were, it was over. Next up for the Beavers is a match with Cristoval out of the San Angelo area. The Cougars have been nearly unstoppable in 2020 with just one loss. Their most famous alum, the great Jack Pardee, who played six-man football for the team before they went to 11-man back in the mid-90s. There are all the game details on your screen. Reporting from Jordanton, I'm Greg Sherman.